a huge accident on Saturday morning involving Alex Caffey. One of the worst accidents in recent Formula One history occurred during qualifying. By Eddie Irvine, field up, look at field up, and into the wall, who was that? Coulthard, Coulthard in the wall. David Coulthard into the wall, will stop the race, they'll have to red, the they'll have to oh, red this flag this. terrible. Look, oh, this is quite appalling. This is the worst start for a Grand Prix that I have ever seen in the whole of my life. Formula One is an incredibly popular worldwide sport, drawing crowds of more than 6 million people every year to witness the pinnacle of racing car technology and the most skilled drivers on the planet. The sport showcases some of the world's fastest racing cars and notoriously challenging circuits, both of which compose a high risk to life. Today, the modern safety measures in place mean that accidents are rarely fatal although occasionally inevitable. Undeniably, the history of Formula One is stained with blood, with one particular incident standing out as a truly disturbing accident, claiming not just the life of one of the sport's rising stars, but also, tragically, a young man who was just 19 years old. Welcome to Grim Tales, and in this episode, we look at one of the most horrific Formula One accidents in its history. But be warned, this episode is quite graphic. Let's dive in. The sport originated in the 1920s and 30s, with the name Formula One being officially adopted in 1947. These days, it is the top tier of single-seater auto racing, with a huge draw for the fans being the fast cars, cutting-edge technology and skilled drivers competing on tracks around the world. Ferrari, McLaren, Mercedes and Red Bull Racing are just some of the top teams, building their own cars and hiring the best talent to drive them in Grand Prix races held on notorious circuits such as Silverstone and Monaco. Regulations set by the FIA govern everything from car design to race procedures to ensure fairness and safety. The competition remains as high stakes as ever, although historically drivers were not just competing to win, but were at times taking their lives into their own hands. Helmets weren't mandatory until 1952, and even then, they were simple cork-lined helmets with no visors. During the 60s, equipment vastly improved with the introduction of better helmets and fireproof overalls. But by the beginning of the 1970s, the sport had taken nearly 30 lives since its inception. Despite this, Tom Price, born in 1949 in Debingshire, Wales, decided he wanted to follow in the footsteps of sporting legends and become a racing car driver. Price's fascination with motorsport began while driving for the local bakery, idolising Scottish driver Jim Clark, who unfortunately would himself become an F1 fatality in 1968. Jim Clark. Twice world champion racing driver and one of the most admired men in the history of motorsport. With teammate Graham Hill, Clark was to compete in a Formula 2 race at Hockenheim, Germany. Fate decreed it would be his last race. Price was known as Mald to those who knew him well. In an interview, one childhood friend would reflect on their passion growing up and quote, By the time we reached 17, we developed a craze for driving. To put a finer point on it, for speed. We were boy racers and would often go to the Kleinog Forest and pretend to be rally drivers. We would never admit it at the time, but Mald really had the edge over us. His parents would also later speak in interviews about Price's love of the sport and his distress when the drivers he worshipped suffered injuries or worse. By the age of 20, he was taken under the wing of Trevor Taylor, a longtime friend of Price's fallen hero, Jim Clark. 
Price showed great promise in the sport and captured fans' attention immediately due to his skill, good looks and Welsh heritage. To this day, he is still the only Welshman to have ever won a Formula One race. From Mrs. Vera Harmsworth, a silver trophy to commemorate a great race, the Daily Mail Race of Champions. Known as the Rain Master, he seemed to excel in wet conditions and had a charismatic approach that made him a firm fan favourite. Price ascended through the ranks quicker than most. Tom Price takes second, he's moving up. With commentators frequently noting his excellent car control, as if the car was an extension of himself. 20 was seen as slightly late to be starting a racing career, but he more than made up for his late start by throwing himself into every opportunity and listening keenly to the advice of his mentors. By 1975, he had achieved a podium win, signed with Shadow Racing Cars, a team with a very intriguing founder story. Price had now landed himself firmly in the one to watch category. Two years later, at the end of his contract with Shadow and after another podium win in Brazil, rumours were rife about Price joining Team Lotus, a team that dominated the sport during the 1960s and would likely see his star factor soar. But before that, Price would need to complete the 1977 South African Grand Prix at the Kyalami circuit. Things were looking positive as the weather appeared to be on Price's side. A recent shower had caused wet conditions at the track and Price logged the fastest time in the second practice session, one second faster than his nearest competitor, Nicky Lauder. Amongst those working the event was Frederick Janssen van Voren, the 19-year-old, also known as Fricky, had volunteered for the position of Marshal. Frederick would have been on full alert at all times, while also enjoying the atmosphere and the perks of being trackside at one of the most famous races in the world. Accidents were extremely common. Price himself had been involved in three different accidents over the course of his career. Tom Price leading in second position now. It's Jody Schechter who's gone up from fifth to second in just two laps. In third position, it's Carlos Parchi in the Martini Brabham. Fourth behind him, Nicky Loud. And there it goes. Look at that. Jackie Stewart, you saw that. That's an accident for Tom Price. It, it's uh, coming out of the corner there. He slid off. He slid off into the barrier there. I think Tom's okay. On one occasion, in a race in Germany, Price suffered a fuel leak in which the fuel burned his skin and affected his sight. He had still ended that race in fourth place and was celebrated for his bravery. The fatal race took place on the 5th of March, 1977. Following initial excitement, the weather conditions had eased and Price had fallen behind in the latter practice sessions. He had what was inarguably a challenging start to the race and found himself at the back of the pack after a slow beginning in his DN8. In spite of this, he quickly began to regain ground, overtaking teammate Renzo Zorzi on the second lap. As the race got well underway, Price had managed to advance from 22nd to 13th position. Spectators watched with bated breath, anticipating a glorious comeback for the Welshman. However, the sporting world would watch on as an unfortunate twist of fate was about to unfold. Price's teammate, Zorzi, encountered severe mechanical issues on the 22nd lap. The fuel metering unit in his car began to malfunction causing fuel to spill out. Zorzi would have had little choice but to pull over in the early stages of the race to avoid severe injury or worse. As Zorzi struggled to escape the vehicle, it became engulfed in flames, making for a visibly distressing scene. This would have propelled safety measures to come into force. 
with footage from the day showing a marshal race to action with a fire extinguisher, eager to avoid a catastrophe. Bill, the marshal, that can be seen reaching Zorzi, had managed to dampen the flames, but the shocking events of this day didn't end there. Bill was not the only marshal to cross the live circuit in an attempt to help. At this point, remaining drivers on the track would likely have little knowledge of the rescue efforts taking place ahead, as Hans Joachim Stuck appeared round the kink and soared at a speed of around 170 miles per hour down the main straight. He was closely tailed by Price. In this very moment, following Bill across the track was Frederick, running to Zorzi's aid hauling just over an 18 kilogram fire extinguisher with him. Even at the ferocity of speed that Stuck was traveling, he managed to notice the pair out in front and swerved in an attempt to avert disaster. But Price was not afforded this time as he was trailing so closely behind Stuck. As Bill managed to reach the other side, Frederick unfortunately would not be so lucky. Price had less than a split second to react. In a horrifying collision, at speeds approaching 170 miles per hour, Price's vehicle struck Frederick, launching him into the air like a ragdoll. Frederick's body was gruesomely mangled by the force of Price's careening car, before landing in a bloody heap at the side of the track. Price may have been able to survive the initial collision, but in another macabre twist, the heavy fire extinguisher hauled across the track in efforts to help Zorzi was flung from Frederick's body and became a deadly projectile. It hurtled towards Price's head with lethal force. Following the impact, the car continued down the track before swerving off course and crashing into an emergency vehicle entrance. Yet this impact didn't stop the vehicle, instead returning it to the live circuit, where it eventually collided with Jacques Lafitte's Ligier. Thankfully, Lafitte was uninjured, though he could not complete the race. While emergency support attempted to deal with the ensuing chaos, the race was allowed to continue. Nicky Lauder, who had previously come second to Price in the practice run, soared over the finish line to claim a win. But upon learning of the distressing and fatal events that had played out earlier that day, he could not celebrate the victory. The day's tragic deaths touch the ceremony. Lauder leaves the traditional champagne spraying to Yodi Schechter, but the young South African's heart just isn't in it. A sad day at Kyle Army. These horrifying scenes are forever immortalized on camera and likely seared into the minds of all those who witnessed those tragic events. I can't begin to imagine the sheer pain and trauma of losing a loved one in such horrific circumstances. In the South African Grand Prix, the Welsh motor racing driver Tom Price has been killed in a crash which also killed a South African track marshal. Price was 27 and had raced in over 40 Grand Prix. Unfortunately, both families of Verun and Price would have to go on without their loved ones, and the world of motorsport would never know what may have become of Tom Price. A Welsh sports commentator said, I think people who are involved in motor racing and have achieved something have an ability to spot talent it was abundantly clear that Tom's ability was above and beyond his contemporaries. A childhood friend of Price has also been quoted saying, Mild was such a humble, modest and talented man who was about to peak in his career. It is nice that he is admired all over the world. After the race, there was lots of speculation on what could have been done to avoid it. Whatever the reason, this incident is seen as one of the worst accidents in Formula One history. Yet, it wouldn't be the last horrific event to take place on a Grand Prix circuit. Thank you all for watching. Until next time, stay sane.